how to manage bipolar disorder. That's what I'm talking about in this video today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and on this channel, I talk about mental health education and self-improvement. So in this episode, I'm gonna be talking to you about how to control your bipolar disorder. Now, the mainstay of treatment for bipolar disorder is medication, but I'm gonna be talking about things you can do to help prevent or even manage symptoms in addition to taking medication. So this is not instead of. Number one, identify things that trigger an episode, either an episode of depression or mania. Some examples of this would be things like work stress, arguments with family members, um, and a huge one is not getting enough sleep. And it's pretty common in the spring and the summer for the longer days to trigger a manic or a hypomanic episode because people will start sleeping less. So you wanna write down these triggers and we'll use them in step six. Number two, keep a record of your moods in the form of a mood diary. And this doesn't have to be anything fancy. You don't have to go buy a book. You could even use the download that I have for you. I'll have a free download for you. Um, the link will be in the description um, of a summary of, of this video today, as well as a few other um, forms that I'll be going over. But this first one is the mood diary. So you're gonna use this diary to monitor your progress or notice when your moods are coming on. That's essentially all it is. Number three, establish a daily routine. And this is important for anyone because we all need structure, but people with bipolar disorder are particularly uh, sensitive to changes in structure and routine. So the triggers that we listed in step one are some of the things that can destabilize or disrupt your routine. So here's what a routine should consist of, a few basic things at least. So you'd wanna have a regular time that you wake up and a regular time that you go to bed. You also wanna have a regular time frame that you eat your meals. And you should think of these points as anchor points throughout your day. And then all your other activities would be filled in around those anchor points. Now I realize you're not gonna always be able to control your work and your school schedule. But if you don't have these anchor points, then you never even think about it. And then you just have this kind of free floating day um, that just kind of comes and goes however it goes. And that's the kind of thing that can really lead to say sleep deprivation when you're in a manic episode or starting to get there. And the sleep deprivation is really what can trigger another or a manic or hypomanic episode. The opposite problem of an unstructured day is the tendency to sleep all day when you're depressed. So what do we do to help prevent that problem? Is number four, have an activity plan that you implement when you start oversleeping or withdrawing from people when you're in the depressed phase. And it's kind of like having a disaster management plan in place before the hurricane comes. So. Let's say your normal bedtime routine is sleeping from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. But when you're depressed, you're going to bed around nine and waking up around nine in the morning. And this would be the for, for the person who's got a flexible work schedule or maybe you work from home so no one really knows when you're getting up. When, this, when you start doing this, that's when you pull out your activity plan, which would have things on it like walking the dog, um, taking a walk around the neighborhood, going to the library, vacuuming the house. These are just a few examples, but they're activities that force you to get your body moving, even if you're just slogging through in your depressed state, because any amount of activity and movement is an improvement. And this is what we call behavioral activation therapy. It's a little more complicated than this, but this is just one example of it. When you become manic, you'll start going to bed even later and waking up earlier. And st so instead of sleeping from say 6 or 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., you start sleeping from two to five or two to six. And you feel fine, you know, that it's not like you wake up feeling sleep deprived but the sleep deprivation has the cumulative effect of churning up a, a manic state. And to combat this, you can implement dark therapy, and that's number five. 
There's been more studies showing a connection between bipolar disorder and your body clock. And people with bipolar disorder can be particularly sensitive to the light dark schedule. So an intervention to help with mania would be to would be the dark therapy. And what this means is keeping yourself in a dark environment from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. for a total of 14 hours. Now, that's what they did in the studies. I know this is impractical for most people, so a substitute actually would be using blue light blocking glasses from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. And this has the same effect because it's blocking the blue light, which is the light that really affects your body clock. It's a similar light as sunlight. And I have more videos about the body clock. You could take a look there in the upper corner. So in the study, is where the people use the blue light blocking glasses. They use them for seven days straight or seven nights straight for the 14 hours a day. Now, I wear these every evening, not starting at 6 p.m., but when I'm relaxing, getting ready for bed, reading on my iPad or watching YouTube videos, and I use it to block the light to keep it, or block the blue light that's coming from the device to keep it from interfering with my sleep. And I typically fall asleep in them. They're not comfortable, but nonetheless, I fall asleep in them. For the dark therapy, I would recommend that you wear them for the time that's recommended from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. So even if, and it, you know, it takes a little getting used to walking around in your house wearing sunglasses. They even have ones that if you wear glasses that can fit over your glasses. These are a really inexpensive pair from Amazon. So going back to the 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. thing, if you're driving home at 6 p.m., you're not even home yet, put them on in your car. That's even better because when you're driving, you're being exposed to the sunlight, particularly in the spring and the summertime. So you need them even more in the car than you do in your house with the tungsten lighting. So put them on, you wear them all evening long. I doubt that you really need to sleep in them, but when you wake up, you put them back on and keep them on until 8 a.m. And that would be how you could implement dark therapy when you are in a manic phase or hypomanic phase and not and only sleeping for three and four hours a night. The last strategy to control your bipolar disorder is to have a relapse prevention plan. And this is where you would pull out the triggers that we discussed in step one and use them at this point. And you probably wanna get the help of your therapist or doctor to help you brainstorm through some strategies to help you either avoid the triggers altogether or to help you be less reactive to them. Now, this is not a guarantee that you'll never ever have another episode, but it can make the difference in the severity of the episodes or even the timing of the next episode because bipolar disorder is a biological illness that's not solely dependent on your environmental stresses or triggers, but there is the potential to reduce the number of episodes that you have or the severity of them by controlling your your triggers. I hope this was helpful for you. I have the package for you that you can download. Just click on the link um, in the description. And it includes a mood diary, trigger worksheet, um, an activity plan, and a relapse prevention worksheet. If you like this video, click like. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think.